So today I decided to make a video that is a bit weird actually because I never thought I would make a video about the Flat Earth and about the Flat Earth because first of all that's something that doesn't exist in Portugal and that's something that I'm kind of proud that it doesn't exist. I think Portugal is educated enough even though with all the failures in our education to not convince people just like that that the earth is now suddenly flat like we believed it was like 500 years ago it's weird that in the age of information the paradox continues the more information there is the less people know about everything and obviously the part on which misinformation plays a very big part because people are credulous a lot of the time and will believe in anything just because they can't explain it for themselves or because that they simply are lazy and will not learn from people that actually study this stuff again if you want to if you are sick you go to a doctor if you want to know how a car works you go to a mechanic and if you want to know the shape of the earth and the cosmos and the universe you go to an astrophysicist you don't go to a youtube video or an internet site or a forum and suddenly you become a flat earther because there's no there's no truth in those sites not anyone that you can prove anyway so anything you hear in those sites should be really taken with a grain of salt or two or three and with this i want probably to start thinking on why i why i think that flat earthers exist um nowadays um, first I will give you a bit of history about the Flat Earth. Um, the, flat th the creator of the, um, the Flat Earth Society was Samuel Shelton. That was born, um, or that created the Flat Earth Society in 1957. And this person was the motivations that to my knowledge, since I did a bit of research about this, but wasn't really extensive. So again, feel free to know it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Um, this man, one of the motivations that led him to the belief that the Earth is flat was obviously Genesis. Because what better book to learn for, to search for evidence and proof and facts than the Bible, of course. Why Genesis, you may ask? Because precisely on Genesis 1, um, chapter 1, versicle 7, um, it is said this. So as you can see, people from primitive times, Hebrews in this case from 2000 plus years ago, didn't know what the universe was, didn't know what the clouds were, didn't know where rain came from, so obviously they needed, since they can see all of this, they could see the rain falling from the sky, and they couldn't explain how that happened because they didn't know the cycle of the water, and they had no idea about what condensation is. These people needed to come up with an explanation for everything that they were seeing. It doesn't matter how, ir how irrealistic it is, it doesn't matter because what matters is an explanation, right? It doesn't matter about truth. Truth is whatever you want. It's subjective, correct? No. And um, since these people had no idea about what the Earth and universe actually were, they needed to tell things as they saw it. If they went to a beach, and as you can do now, you would see the... You obviously couldn't see the curvature of the Earth. You would see a straight line until the horizon, which would let people to believe that the Earth is finite, obviously, but also flat, because the curvature is not noticed until a certain alt altitude. You can obviously notice the curvature of the Earth if you have like a ship really far away. You can see it sink, because it passes through the curvature of the Earth, and your angle now shifts towards the ship. Obviously, people have no idea about what this is and about this, what reality was as a whole. So, and since science was extremely rudimentary back then, they needed, again, to come with an explanation for the things that they saw. 
any kind of explanation, so we don't know how it rains. Oh, the universe is made of water. And there is this firmament with holes on which the water from above the universe falls down to earth. And this is how it rains. Extremely simple, but extremely effective in that time. Because people had really no idea what was going on. They had no idea about nature. Any 10 year old now probably knows more than any old man with 8 years old back then. Because nature is what you study. It's to be, and knowledge is what you know. So, nature will not change. Not according to your beliefs, not according to mine, not according to what you know or lack of thereof, of knowledge. So, it will remain the same, whether you want it or not. And this is where things really get interesting to me, because people like to believe that their beliefs actually influence reality when they don't. It doesn't matter how much you believe in unicorns, they don't start existing because you have a very strong belief on it. Wishful thinking is not good for you. And I've talked about this before. It leads you to an illusion. You start walking like Alice in Wonderland. An illusion, it's not real. It exists only in your mind. Um, why I think that it started in America. And why do I think that America is probably the country with more flat earthers, even though that I tried to research the number of flat earthers around the world and even in the flat earth society. But like they say, they don't keep track of the records because why would they, right? It's not like it's important for statistics. Um, but I did read in a site, I think it's correlated to the flat earth society that he claims that approximately 4% of all people in the world are flat earthers, which is more or less 300 million people. Absurd. <laughs> and I'm going to call it absurd without any kind of statistics to back this up, which is something that I don't really do. But again, they are the ones who don't give me statistics to analyze, so it's up to my criteria to say if it makes sense or not, and it doesn't make sense. Why? Because America doesn't have a lot more than 300 million people right now. So, even if you consider that all of them are flat earthers, all of them, it's still impossible. Not all Americans or not nearly all Americans are flat earthers. That would be incredible, but no. But I would really like to have statistics to know if it's zero... 3%, 1% of all Americans. I, this, these are data that obviously they don't keep because probably it's bad for them to keep. It shows how insignificant they are. But it's really, it would be really interesting to keep this data and to make a poll in America to know more or less about how many people actually believe in this. Um, why do I think that America is the country, again, with no statistics, but quite likely, the country with more flat earthers, because the government failed to these people. The government over the decades has failed Americans with crises like the Monica Lewinsky scandal with Bill Clinton. That proved to everyone that an intern is actually more than an intern when it comes to the White House, or at least when it comes to that particularly particular president, to that particular concept of the time. The Watergate scandal with Nixon in 72, um, the th conspiracy theories of 9-11 with Bush and America or the government adds having something to do with the death of more than 2,999 people in 2001 the war on Iraq over nuclear weapons that were never found all of these things don't push forward the trust that a people can have in their nation. And I could go to Vietnam War and Cold War and all the lies that were said back then. And all the lies that are said now. And all the scandals, of course, with more recently with Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But I'm not even going to go that far because I don't have time for that in this video. And if you have a country that no longer 
believes in their government, they need to make truth for themselves because they do not, they, they will have no means to make, to know the truth any other way. They don't have the power to just break through CIA headquarters or NSA or FBI headquarters and just open all the files that they have and read all the portfolios that they have from decades ago. They don't have time for that. They don't have the power to do that. It would be chaos. It would be mayhem. So, every time that a person that you don't trust in, in this case a government, but let's suppose for the sake of time that the entire government is one person, if you know that this person is faulty and you know and you don't trust this person to begin with, everything that that person says will be seen as a lie. Just in the beginning of it, it will be seen as something that cannot be trusted because you don't trust in this person to begin with. So these people, since they don't know the truth and they have no means of knowing the means of knowing the truth, they need to make the truth for themselves. Doesn't matter how stupid and idiotic it is. It needs to be said for them, because since they can't believe in the people that are telling them the information, because they think that they are part of a higher conspiracy, they are part of the government. They are part of the all of this, all the four hundred thousand scientists that helped, for example, Apollo eleven put Neil Armstrong in the moon in sixty nine. They're all supposedly involved with the fake moon landing, which is exactly where probably the greatest... It's probably the beginning of the evolution of flat earthers. The people who don't believe in the moon landing and flat earthers are probably an hierarchy of people. Being the moon landers, the denials, um, the base, and the flat earthers, the new peak and top. Um... So you can't trust in a government that doesn't, that lies to you. And again, they have no means of knowing the truth and they think that everyone that is trying to tell them the truth is against them and is part of this conspiracy. So it's a delusion, a mass delusion, massive delusion. Also, I've, and I'm talking about this topic because yesterday at like 4 a.m. in the morning, instead of sleeping for a class tonight, today, I was watching a small documentary and a small debate between three physicists versus three flat earthers, which I will leave the link in the description, of course. And it was surprising, or not, not really, but more revealing, that flat earthers consider themselves scientists. Hilarious. No. Obviously, the three physicists didn't, weren't flat earthers. The people who were flat earthers was a man that worked in a water company, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a man that was Christian and, I believe, a creationist, too. And another woman, which the only thing I remember was she saying that she skydives. And she had a very Karen mood to her. Um... These people are not qualified to begin with, to begin with, to analyze anything whatsoever about astrophysics. No, they are not qualified. And we are not even talking about string theory or quantum physics or parallel dimensions. We are talking about things that can be photographed, that can be proven, that any 10-year-old knows, and for which there is no reason for them to be hidden from us. I could even consider that the moon landing would be would have reasons to be concealed since there was a race against Russia in the 60s for the control of space and yes winning the moon would be at that time winning space even though that Russians won orbit with Yuri Gagarin um, Americans certainly won the moon so they won that war in space against the Russians and I can see more reason to believe why people didn't go to the moon than I can see for the flat earthers. It's just insane and ridiculous. And the many reasons that I've heard from these people are obviously religious, like I said. Because these people don't understand anything about anything. They don't understand how little they don't understand. Which is a clear sign of Dunning-Kruger, the delusion on which... The less you know, the more you think you know. 
it's like debating and it's it was clear in that debate of people that were of these three physicists trying to show them with reason that there is no reason to think that the earth is flat the amount of scientists that it would be needed to to keep this hidden would be astoundingly ridiculous and for no reason why if the earth was flat why not just say it is and these people have no reasons to believe in this and they have no explanations for this either so it's a matter of belief because belief is blind and blinds people and this is what i mean with not with thinking that critical thinking is something bad because they don't like being scrutinized they don't like their beliefs being completely seen and studied and calculated and methodically analyzed no and these people these at least two of them were one of them was clearly a creationist the other probably two the reason they believe the earth is flat is not because they had any kind of weird mathematical theory to it that would disprove everything that we think we know no it was because the bible said so like i said in chapter one versicle seven yes um and the Bible is not a scientific book. This shouldn't need to be said in the 21st century. Nothing about the Bible makes sense when it comes to nature, when it comes to biology, physics, mathematics. Nothing of this makes sense in the Bible. I'm currently, by the way, reading it for the sake of it. Um, but... Um, it makes no sense to believe in something without evidence, without proof, and against all evidence and against all proof. It's believing in something for no reason and against all reason. Doesn't make sense. And I believe I understand that all governments lie. All governments. There are obviously all countries probably have governments that have a history of lying and deceiving their population, but. The thing is, when it comes to matters of facts, it matters what it's shown to you. Not the history of the country, not the history of your government, not the history of the people, but the things that they show to you with facts. Factual. Things that you can trust because they are there, because you can see it for them for yourself. So there's no reason to deny it. To deny reason is to be rational, is to be illogical. And these people apparently are comfortable with it and I've seen a movie where it was a flat earth movie where I'm going to leave it in the description too if I can find it on which the movie ended precisely because they were making an experiment and obviously because the earth has a curvature if you walk forwards and you do it for a couple of miles i suppose the the angle on which you are now is going to be different than the angle that the other person is because obviously you are a bit lower than that person because you are going through the curvature or obviously because the earth isn't flat this happens and their theory was let's put in a laser a laser here and let's shoot it forwards if the earth is flat then you will be able to see the laser in this um in this wall that was a few miles um, ahead. Surprise, the laser did not appear on that wall. It was needed for the person to lift a cardboard and the laser appeared in the cardboard because obviously that person was lower in angle than the person that was shooting the laser. So the movie ends with them disproving their own theory. But do you think that because this happened that they are going to now accept reality. No. They're going to keep lying to themselves and try to find a new theory to why this failed. They're going to blame themselves for the failure of the experiment and not to blame their stupidity. This is where critical thinking is necessary and like Neil deGrasse Tyson said So the movie, the video is already way too big and I think I made my point. It's insane to me that people keep thinking that the Earth is flat, that we didn't go to the moon, that 
The Bible is a scientific book. Weird to me when all of these things have been proven either true or false.